Dr. Kudinchuk, can you summarize your points to offer a take-home message to the responders out there? Yeah, well, let's come back to the fact that we're celebrating 50 years of CPR. And what have we learned in the last 50 years about CPR? And I'll tell you what I'm, I'm embarrassed by having learned, and I've learned that we forgot how to do it. And part of the problem, I think, in the last few decades is we became so enamored with technology, with buttons, with devices, and with drugs that we failed to realize that none of those are going to do any good in the absence of good CPR. We can have the most effective, antiarrhythmic, life-saving drug in the world, but if we do poor CPR, we might as well hang formaldehyde for good, what good it's potentially going to do. And I hope the science that we've talked about in the last you know, number of minutes will bring us back to this pyramid diagram that I started off with, saying everything we do in resuscitation has to be based on a solid foundation. And that foundation realizes on a pinnacle of a pyramid that can really tip, meaning it's very, very fragile. And we need to treat CPR as a fragile foundation. And that means we have to pay close attention to details. The details of how fast we press, how deep we press, that we completely recoil, and that we minimize pauses. Those are the details that will kill our patients if we don't pay close attention to them. On the more positive side, the more effectively we perform those interventions, the better everything subsequent to that is going to look. Shock's going to look better. The effective intubation is going to be better. And my own bias is that the impact of antiarrhythmic drugs and vasoactive drugs it can only look better when CPR is performed better. And ultimately, I think if we can get that pinnacle solidly founded in our minds, in our hearts, and in our practice, we will ultimately improve outcome from cardiac arrest. So 50 years of CPR, what has that taught us? We need to do better CPR. Can we do it? You bet we can. Is there room for improvement? Always room for improvement. How do we do that? Train well, feedback, be responsive, and apply what we've learned.